Hi guys, today I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with this composition book that I got at the dollar store and the I'm going to embellish the cover, uh, the, the just the cover in the back. Uh, this is part of a swap that I've added my name to and I'm going to be switching with someone else and uh, I'm going to do some mixed media and the rules are pretty simple no stickers no flat stickers on it uh, and you have to put at least three embellishments well I always go to town when it comes to that so the first thing I'm going to do and actually the way you decorate it is your choice so what I'm going to do is the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use some gesso to gesso up all my cover in the back in order for it to be able to adhere to whatever I decide to put on and I'm going to use some um, modeling paste also and uh, this is uh, this is the gesso that I'm going to use and this is also the modeling paste that I'm going to use and um, we'll see what we can come up with so the first step is I'm going to protect the inside of this book by adding uh, I just asked, added some wax paper to the inside and the back side and that is just to protect my um, my covers so now I'm going to gesso it I love this uh, this cover because um, I don't have to worry about uh, I just wipe it off after on on this particular I don't have to have a palette is what I'm saying so this is pretty easy um, it's not a paint it's a gesso gesso will make it just uh, cover the the uh, you know the the slippery stuff so it will adhere a lot better so this is one side and I'm going to let it stand and then I'm going to do up the back side of it and um, it dries fairly quick and gesso is a product that when you do mixed medium it's almost a have to have because uh, there's a lot of surface you're going to work on that's going to be a little slippery and um, when it's slippery like that it tends to not grab onto whatever you're going to work with so whether it's paint whether it's whatever it's like almost like a flat type of uh, gesso so I'm going to leave that standing up to dry while I clean this up and I will be right Okay, so now that um, my my um, gesso has dried, I'm going to use some of that paste, as I said, and I'm going to start playing. When I say playing, is exactly that. I am. Uh, I'm going to use some texture paste here. You can get it at different consistencies. Uh, this Curry brand is something is a Canadian brand. Curry is a Canadian store, uh, or an art store actually for artists, and this is where you can buy this kind of paste. And I am just going to make up a really nice little um, batter here in order to make a look of some type of brick to be on the front of this book, which I will enhance at a later time. So, it's mixed media all the way, and uh, something I haven't done for a while, basically, but I do like it. I'm just going to leave it a little rough, because I, uh, I think bricks are not necessarily straight, straight. Now, you can do this with this, or I could smooth it out and uh, use a sponge dauber to... Um, to do it up or whichever one until you're satisfied with what's what you're looking at and then when you gently put it pull it off this is what you have let me give you a close-up of uh, what this is hold on here for a second I'll give you a close-up my hands are a little pasty but uh, you can really see how deep that brick is and how pretty it is now I would suggest you go wash your your um, your stencil as soon as you can because it will make a mess and um, you won't be able to clean it and you won't be able to use it with paint after. But for now, what I want to do is use up another stencil and do a little bit more. And this one here has a little bit smaller um, 
smaller pieces to paste up and uh, just going to add a little bit more texture to this yep just a tad more nothing extravagant and always taking care of not pasting up or not ruining what I just made these are a couple of butterflies on here that I think would look kind of cute I, I think the back I will just be painting it I won't be adding any texture to the back and if you don't like when it runs over, just take your knife and push it away. It's as simple as that. And it makes it makes some really, really nice effect. I think um, I think I'm going to put some lettering on this too. You, I mean the sky's the limit, right? You can do whatever you like and um, it'll all be okay because there's no fast, hard and fast and rule when you come to pasting or that's why they call it mixed media. You use a different bunch of medias to make whatever your mind feels like it at that time. And art is not is not an ABC rule. Art is is just a matter of what appeals to you. And uh, yep, I like that. So we'll do that and I think I might do a little bit more on this side here just to enhance or will I? I have different things here that I might use and uh, I have one here that I think I will use right away and it's just a matter of uh, kind of like this it's a little bit of just a little bit of squiggle lines and uh, now depending on the thickness that you you add this it's going to take a while to dry so it's not something that you're going to be able to just get right back at her so so give yourself some time in order for it to uh, to dry and uh, then then you should be all set there you go look at that that's really pretty i like that a lot matter of fact i think i'm going to bring it down somewhat on the sides here just because i think it's a it's a nice, it's a nice texture. And I will pick it up on the side. Like that. And uh, yeah, I like that. I do like that. Do like that, do like that. Is that all I want on there? Do you guys think there's enough on that? To make it worthwhile or should I add maybe something like this this is part of a rose like that and there you go I think that's enough okay so I'm going to wash up my stamps get this not my stamps my stencils and uh, get this drying and I'll be back when it's all dried and we'll continue from there. Okay, so my composition book now that I I gessoed and I added all some texture paste on the front on diff with different stencils is completely dry. It's been dry over 24 hours. Uh, I just left it to dry. It wouldn't have taken that long, but I uh, was working on another project. So now I have it in this box, which I use. It's just a box, a regular box for sides that I use to spray when I use a spray and such so it doesn't overspray on my desk. And I have all kinds of different types of sprays. Um, I have some delusions and so forth. So what I'm going to do with this as I'm using it, I have no plan in mind. This is just a little bit of spray here and there, and I am going to spray onto my onto my book. This one here might be a little stuck, obviously. A little nothing that a little pin will be able to fix. And uh, I'm just going to spray it here and there until I am happy with how it looks, and then I'll go on to the next step. Whoops, I just sprayed on my hands. There you go. If ever your your nozzle gets a little stuck, just take a little pin. It's just a little pin and I just had to scratch off a little bit in the front and this is it. So I am going to put that pin back away in my same place. I don't know where to find it. 
when I go looking for it again, which is not often, but it does happen. Okay, so, and I also have a, um, a wet tissue paper that I keep handy, so if I do not like, or if I find there's too much, I can just take it off, because it is water paint, water-based spray paint, I should say. So, using more of Delusion's paint, I'm going to add a little bit of blue, just here and there, nothing too crazy and I also have a little bit of cool cut grass a little bit of cool cut grass same same idea is um, I'm gonna clean out this nozzle again I should have done that before I started there you go it's as easy as that and you can see the colors all kind of interacting with each other and I do have a purple I'm not going to use it here I have a fresh lime which I normally really like and um, it's uh, it's very very fun to use. It uh, the line kind of with the blues especially it can turn into a really nice green or or anything like that if I can get it going here. There you go. And uh, what else do I have here? I have a vibrant turquoise. Vibrant turquoise. Oh, I like that. I do like that. And what else do I have here? I have a warm funky fuchsia. That could be give it a shot of. As you can tell, I'm not making the brick area necessarily a brick area. This is not going to probably end up like a um, steampunk or stuff like that. I, I don't think I will be ending up doing this. This is a bit of red, what is called cherry pie. I will go back now with uh, with a bit of uh, yellow. Let's see what that does here and there. And uh, I'm going to take my little bit of uh, towel, paper towel here, and I'm going to sponge some of that out because I want to see what it does with a little bit less. But what I like about the spray is that the spray will go into all the nicks and crooks of all the the, um, the textured paste, which if I did it with a sponge dauber is a lot harder because it pretty much sits on top, right? So see how it's turning out? Uh, this is turning out really super nice. I like, I like it a lot. I really do like it a lot. So now I'm going to see I have some... Um, Mr. Here, it's a um, little bit more of a shine. It's carbon black. It's uh, deco art media. But uh, I was thinking I had a browns in that color, but I only have a white. Well, I have more than that, but I have a primary cayenne. I've used some of that. I have used some of that. So I guess I'm I'm going to uh, I'm going to use out of that collection I have a shimmer mister which is the same as what I similar to what I've used this except it's not a flat paint as you can probably tell just by when I'm spraying it here it has a bit of a shimmer and in this type of paint I do have um, different types of it uh, when I say different types of it different colors here's a turquoise a little bit turquoise and I also have a little bit of fuchsia violet now this is a color that you have to be a little careful because it will turn out muddy and what else do I have in that I have a shimmer mist in white so I'm going to add some of that maybe it'll tone down a bit of the, um, the purple here and then I'm going to do exactly the same things my friend I will be taking some paper towel and just dabbing some of it off and this will bring a shimmer as in a shine into the paints like that this I'm starting to really like now this is definitely a far cry from being done but uh, it's a good start so now that I'm okay with that side. I'm just going to flip it over and I am going to do the same on the opposite side. I will be spraying some um, 
some paints all over the back. I have applied some gesso, as you know. So the gesso did, uh, it'll seal the bottom end. And I'm just going to play until I'm happy with this. And again, just like the opposite side, it definitely won't be done. What I've put as in, in on top here as a uh, wax paper, it's just to protect the inside of the journal. And I am just going to pat it down until I am pleased with what I have. And as you can tell, because I don't have any, I don't have any um, texture, it grabs on in a different form because there's nothing to grab on to. So it just makes it a little bit different. Different, pretty, but different. Uh, let me see what else. I'm going to grab them. I think it's a little bit of a green. It almost looks like the yellow, guys. And I think I'd like to see a little bit of turquoise in there. And uh, see what uh, I can do. Now, at this given point, I'm liking the way it's turning out. So at this point, I'm going to shut the camera off because I will take my heat gun at this point and dry up the paint. And I'll be back with you guys in a second. All right, so now I'm back. And uh, I've refreshed my wax paper here on the side just because it makes it cleaner. You know, <laughs> if I'd have continued right from there, maybe I wouldn't have made uh, a change. But it saves me from some, uh, make sure that I don't dirty anything. Now I'm going to do different things with this. Here I have, again, uh, by Deco Art Media. And I have some antiquing cream here. I have... Um, the color English Red Oxide. I have Pacina Green and I also have uh, what they called Umber. Raw Umber, which is a very popular color. Raw Umber or Sienna or stuff like that is a very popular color when if you're an artist. But this is Raw Umber. So I'm going to specifically work the brick and, and just by putting a few drops here and there and this is just a uh, Tim Holtz sponge and this is more of a creamy type of uh, paste so it's not quite as watery as the water-based paint so it's a cream it's a, definitely what it is a cream so the first coat I'm putting is the I am putting that a, uh, a patina green and next one I'm going to put is the red oxide. English red oxide, it says. And again, I'm just going to uh, add it here and there. You know, I said a while ago, uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to make this um, steampunk. Uh, I really didn't give it too, too much thought. I just started. Uh, with the blank slate and decided to add some stenciling with some texture and go from there. Uh, the more I'm going at it, the more I like it. I'm still not sure. I may not go, but I'm kind of liking this, uh, definitely this, this kind of old world look brick. But anyway, we'll see. Now I'm going to add a bit more, but this time here I'm going to add the umber, the raw umber. So I'm going to add a bit of this. As you can tell, it's, it's a, a lot more creamier than the other stuff. And it seems to get on lighter and lighter and lighter. So I'm going to try to do between the bricks with the raw, the raw umber. The raw umber in between. So when you do this kind of work, normally you don't, you have an idea, but mixed media is you work as you go along. You have an idea when you know your colors, you know you're going to blend in this color, this color, and this color, you'll end up with this or that. That is the norm in an artist. Doesn't mean that if you don't know your colors, you can't do it. You might take a few extra coat, but you can still do it. So now that I've done this much, I'm going to add a little bit more of that 
patina green here and there because I'd like it to look as if the um, there's been a little bit of wear here on here and it's just a matter of playing with it till you're happy with it is always what I say and that sounds like it's mighty fine to me just like that I like it I don't know if you can see the difference as I'm working along but can you see as I'm doing it and I'm getting to like this a lot so I'm going to leave this as is I may come back but for now I'm going to leave it as is and um, I think I'm going to use some of this Nouveau embellishment mousse again I have uh, the colors that I have I only have two colors of this is the uh, burnishing bronze and the 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 the, the um, mousse fresh copper it's two colors that I use a lot of and I normally use it just with my fingers like this it's a color that I um, I find these the the mousse is a is been a really good experience I use it a lot with my clay too um, the clay that I use with my uh, Fimo clay or whichever I have depending on which one I grab but yeah and, it, and I really really like it so now I'm going to work a little bit with the um, now I don't know if you guys is, are creamy like mine but mine is really almost to a, a thickness that sometimes I, I add water to it um, just because I find that it's a uh, and it could be just me, but I find it's a little, this one here is a little too dry for my liking. Just going to add a little bit of water, because everything is here that I'm using is water-based. So what I mean by water-based is that it's, it's water-based, it, 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 there's no alcohol in it. So you can use one product with the next and so forth. And it really turns out really pretty nice. I don't want to put too much water in it, because I don't want to change the color or the, the texture of it but I am going to add some on my some a little bit on my bricks to, to give it a little bit of highlight and the uh, mattier stuff will look a little bit more in depth and I'm going to use some of the cream again just to the other cream I'm liking that I'm liking that a lot the colors are still showing and radiating in the back, but it's uh, bringing it out, bringing out the texture. I work a lot with my fingers. You don't have to. You can use. Um, you definitely can use. Uh, you can definitely use a um, sponge or a paper towel or whatever you want to use. If it's not as creamy as this, you can even use a brush. But this would be too, way too creamy for too hard cream for a brush like that yep so far I like that so I'll cover this back up I think before I close this one I'm gonna add a few squirts of this to let it soak in into the color and here I have a little bit of white and these are pearl effects pearl and a lot of times I'll just use my fingers and I use a lot of this, uh, well, I use a lot of my mixed media on a lot of the things, even cards. I find you can, um, you can use it the way you want to. Um, I find this, you just need just a wee bit on your fingers or on a brush if you wanted to. And you can just kind of do highlights or, or whichever whichever one you want to add a bit more pizzazz to your to your things now I might come back to the white here after a bit but for right now it'll grab on to just about everything and when I seal this you won't even see it like that and I have a white pearl on that and I also have a gold here and um, the gold it's going to be pretty much the same thing I think I'm going to highlight a bit more of these butterflies here that I added on it's really coming together guys I don't know if you can really really see it from where you are but um, it, it, working with 
mixed media is so it's messy but if you don't free to dirty your hands it can be really 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 outstanding 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 I'm going to add a little bit more here and then I'm going to take a little bit more of my um, bronzy type of color here just to add a bit of shimmer inside here a little bit inside and around the brick area like so. just to give it a little bit more shimmer don't have to use this you can use anything you have in your arsenal arsenal of crafts stuff because it's really really easy and fun fun to use now this here they call this tur turquoise satin it's a wax and uh, it's made by um, art alchemy or L archelmy or whatever I can't uh, it's by phenobar anyway and um, it is a wax like this and I normally like to run it after people use it for many many different things and this is what I like to use it for I also have it in a very liquid form and I just find that it adds a bit of a seal to everything it mats it down a tad but it's okay it's, I don't mind that look whatsoever but it also secures a lot of things that I have and when I'm done I normally take a bit of the heat gun to it and when I'm done with the heat gun and melted all that wax into the fibers of the book I will then just take a soft cloth and run it on top and polish it all up and uh, see what happens I'm going to take a bit of my sponge here because I find just a little I dropped the gold so I'm coming back with a little bit of that turquoise onto onto the sponge here just fill in the gaps because I find just a little too gold gold for me don't like that and uh, that's pretty much good for this side so give me a few minutes I'm going to put the heat blower on it and I will be back and we'll go from there okay as I was heating this up I thought to myself I'd like to see some more texture on this so why not why not I have Tim Holtz uh, distress embossing I have vintage I have um, what else do I have in a vintage stuff here I have a Stupendous Age Copper. I have Age Spice by Stupendous. And uh, nope, this one here is smooth, but that's not what I'm looking for. And I believe that's all I have in a rougher texture. So, what I'm going to do, I have a small that came with something here, a small Versamark by Ranger. And I am going to just add a bit of um, hmm, that's interesting a bit of uh, I guess of that paste that you usually get with a, a Versamark but I think this one here is uh, pretty much shot so let me see what else I can find Now remember, I'm not looking for full coverage. I'm looking for a hit and miss. So do we want H Copper? Do we want H Spice? Or do we want Tim Holtz? I'm going to use the H Spice. I have seen it in action and uh, I did like it. So let me pour a little bit of this, like this. We're not done yet, so let 
me pour some of this back out. I'm just mixing it all up and wasting it. So I'm going to... I can do it without making too big of a mess here. I'm going to pour some of it back down in here. And I'm going to pour that back in the bottle, aged spice. And now I'm going to take some aged copper and add a little bit here and there. And I guess, since I just used a little bit, I'm going to use some Tim Holtz Vintage Photo. Vintage Photo is a lot smaller. It's a, it's a not as grainy. Still very pretty though, but not as grainy as the, the other stuff. But still, um, it makes a beautiful uh, rough finish. Oops, let me open this paper piece again. And I never throw it out, even if it's mixed up, because uh, I, I can use it, so why not, right? Now I'm going to shut this off for a minute and grab the vacuum and vacuum this up so I won't be adhering all this, or maybe not, hold on, let me see if I can push most of this off first, there you go. Now everything's happening, and I'm going to take my gun and heat this up, guys. Stay with me. I'm going to sh do it uh, off camera, so it'll save you that noise and that time. Okay, so I am done drying all this out. This is how it came come out. I am definitely not done. Now I'm going to embellish it with um, embellishments other than this. But before I go there, I'm going to wax up a bit of this back, and then I will use up... Um, some of my other embellishments and start on the front. So bear with me while I do this and get myself ready for the other embellishments and I will be back with you in no time at all. Hi. I didn't particularly like the way the inside of the cover came out. So what I'm going to do is, uh, because we're only supposed to decorate the, well, only supposed to, the thing is to decorate the front. I'm going to mod podge the back page. Now I could glue a piece of cardstock or whatever, but I'm going to mod podge it because I think it's going to look good. <laughs> so I've got some mod podge here, and I'm just going to use it as a as a glue mod podge. And you guys all know what that is. We paste on, paste off. Uh, paste on, I mean, and add, I'm just going to give it a good coat here, like this, of Mod Podge. And uh, then I'm going to do a bit of collage. And the collage that I'm going to do is I have some leftover Tim Holtz. There you go. I have some leftover Tim Holtz uh, ideology paper. And uh, it's like a tissue paper. So I have some like that, and I am going to add it on this, this, um, this paper. And the reason why is because the pages are white, and I thought it would go well because the pages are white. This would go well to be there too. Just as simple as that. And all I'm going to do at this point is take my exact. I could have cut it right to right to uh, measurements, but um, well, <laughs> it's a collage, so it's fine the way it is right there. And then this, I will do the same. I think I'll mod podge it first to make sure that everything goes smoothly. So all I'm going to do is add a piece of Mod Podge. I'm going to Mod Podge against on top. And what this is going to do is it's going to harden and it'll make a nice cover. A very nice cover. 
and uh, that dollar store cover will become very firm and no bubbles are in between. Now I could have used a uh, credit card to do this too. You do not need to use a brush, credit card or a piece of card stock, flat, hard, uh, maybe uh, some chipboard, a piece of an old chipboard or something like that would have worked too. Don't forget that on your Mod Podge or anything like that, if you use some um, petroleum jelly uh, like Vaseline or something around the edge before you close your lid, it won't stick. So that's kind of nice to know. So I kind of like that. I am going to dry that and I'll be back and we'll cut the edges and then we'll be ready to put the embellishments on the outside. Hi, I'm back. I have finished decorating the front of the journal. When I left you the last time we had um, together, I had showed you how I made the texture and then on different mediums how I enhance those bricks and you know all the texture that I did with the textured paste which brought the cover up because I needed to dry all the paints when I left you all the paints that I had adhered to it so to save on time I finished decorating it because decorating it really is is, is just a uh, embellishment stuff and uh, pretty much everybody has their own style but I'll show you what I did. These are uh, flowers that I have. Uh, I think one was gray, one was pink or peach, blue, whatever. I just sprayed them with the same uh, deco art medium that I have and uh, that I used on the base of the cover. And uh, I just made a cluster. On top of what I have here is chicken wire. And you can buy these at your local, well, I say local, I bought, you can buy them at Michael's and stuff. It's by roll, they call it wired ribbon. I can't imagine making a ribbon with that. Not me, because they're, you know, but uh, maybe you can. But uh, anyway, I've used it on different projects, using it just and stretching it out of form or whatever to make a metal background or use it as a, an embellishment for a special texture. So this is what I did there. I used some of that, um, I call it chicken wire, and I stretched it out, and I glued it onto the background, and I'm not sure if you can, re yeah, I think you can tell here, all this wire here, and all from the top to the bottom, I, I put it this way. And then, and then from there, I added the flowers to the end, I added another piece of metal here, which is a leaf, so I'll pull it up a little bit more, uh, a leaf metal, and I added a butterfly, metal butterfly there, and I kind of shaped it together. Uh, this is just a piece of paper, ro uh, paper rope, actually, uh, just a thin paper rope that I had that I've just circled and glued it here and there, and then I added another flower here. To kind of balance off, I had some dimensional letters, and I was had enough to to be able to do enjoy, but I didn't have enough to do enjoy the journey on this with the same. So I put enjoy, journey, and the in a different one, and I left this one matted, which these I painted, plus um, I embossed them with black emboss embossing paste. And here I just left them, if I, I, if I had had some uh, non-capital letters, I would have put them, but I didn't have any of that. But still, I let them mat so you can tell, enjoy the journey. And here I had a, a background of a face of a clock and uh, just a regular big watch. So, because uh, I take all par parts of the watches that are broken, I take them all apart and I keep them. And I had another little uh, bubbled uh clock on top I don't know if you can can see what that is but and here I had little metal flowers and I added some little bubble centers to that and uh, here I just added I wanted a piece of texture of fabric of sorts so I wanted some textile so I added just a, 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 a antique um, piece of um, bag burlap not burlap bag but a cotton bag and I added that. So that finished 
to me that finished off the top of my little journal and because it's going to be a writing journal I didn't add no closure to it I don't think it's necessary but um, yeah it turned out really really pretty so as you know I took the inside cover because I had dirtied it a bit so I, I um, took the inside of the cover and I mod podged a piece of tissue paper from Tim Holtz and I added the corner the metal corner rounders here on both sides and that finishes the cover so now I'm going to finish off the inside of the back and the back and I will bring you back a closing for the total book all right this is the end of the journey I've explained to you the front I've shown you the inside of the cover here this is I've edged all the all this all the edging black all the cover black and I put a tag on the back with my name and I did the inside of the cover on the back here and guys that come out out of a composition book of $1.50 from the dollar store and it shows you what you can do I love the journey I hope my recipient loves it too and I hope you've enjoyed it and most of all I hope I've inspired you to try one it doesn't take a long time to do. It just go and use up what you have. I enjoyed being with you today. So this is Yvonne and I'm signing off and I hope to see you real soon. Bye.